living a sanctified life does a lot for you. One, number one, it joins you to God's calling and destiny so that you can walk it out without guilt, shame, or condemnation lingering as effects, as contamination in your life. So the contamination, like the Bible talks about garments being defiled by sin, right? So in the spiritual realm, you're dressed up. So like when a son goes astray, what happened to the prodigal son is that he went astray from his father. This was a story, a parable of, Jesus, of God, the father, right? And so he went and he took his inheritance and he went and he sinned. And so when he came back, because he repented, he came back to his father's house. One of the first things that God did was put rings on his finger. He put robes on him of righteousness. And he, he took them back. Okay. Crown on his head, rings on his fingers and robe. And, um, and they threw a big party. It's a, it's a parable to show how much God wants everybody to repent and get right on track with God. That's a big, big, big thing for God. In the Bible, I just finished reading that God takes no pleasure, no pleasure in the death of the wicked. He takes no pleasure. So, like, he's not fiending to, to he doesn't have this jonesing type of attitude of wanting to condemn people. He doesn't have this, like, oh, you sinned? Okay. That's why he's slow to anger. And he's slow to anger, merciful. But on the flip side, it says he's slow to anger because he wants people to repent. So we can't take God's uh, kindness for weakness, as you've heard before. Now, uh, I was reading Ezekiel 18, and I remember reading this as a baby Christian, and this was a big change in my development of how I saw God, how I saw everything, of how I saw just Christian faith. Ezekiel 18 changed my whole perception, and I'll tell you what it says. It said that a, 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 like if your father is a righteous man and the son is wicked, the father doesn't reap what the son did. The son would reap his own actions. So in other words, the son is, is, is basically saying that you can't piggy bank off of your father's righteousness and the righteousness of your father won't get you to heaven. And also, like, everybody's accountable for their own life. So it goes on to say, like, if you're a righteous person, that's great. But, like, let's say you fall out of righteousness and you go back to being wicked. You go to being uh, to doing uh, foolish things. At that point, you're no better than, than the wicked. So then what the book of Ezekiel says is that all of his righteousness, everything that he worked for, will be forgotten. And he would just be judged on what he's currently doing now, unless he repents. And likewise, it goes on to say, if a wicked person goes on sinning, but then later on finds out this is not working for me and repents, and he turns from his wicked way and he turns righteous, then, his, then his, all his transgressions will be blotted out and he will be converted into righteousness. Did you follow what I just said? You can be righteous. You can be walking the straight line and and then turn wicked. And all your righteousness just goes away. It just fades away, like forgotten. Like all of that. A lot of people bank on their righteousness, bank on their works for like speaking for them. And that's what, uh, you know, the Bible says... Lord, Lord, didn't we do X, Y, and Z for you? Didn't we cast out demons? Didn't we? And they, they come forward with, oh, I go to church on Sundays. I do Bible studies on Wednesdays. I do X, Y, and Z. So God is, you know, he sees my righteousness. And then basically they're counting on that to speak for them in a day of judgment, right? What God is clearly telling us in this Bible, in, in, in the Holy Bible, how he said it's not like that he said what he is looking for us to do um I, I believe it's in one thessalonians chapter four i believe it's that 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 speaks on 
living a pure life, uh, uh, living a, a life that is simple. Like you go, you work, you, you work with your hands, you make money, you're not into other people's business. You, you, you know, you're living a pure, sanctified, just a simple life, a simple life, right? Where God is honored, where God is esteemed in your life, you know, the fear of God is in your heart, you know, fear, fear of God is another word for respect, reverence for God, right? And you live that simple life where you just weed out all the distractions, right? All the cares and the worries of this world, like you're not into other people's business, you're not, you're not into the gossip or the slander, you're not into the celebrity, oh, who's doing what and who slept with who and this and that, no, no, all of that, just live a nice simple life. In 1 Thessalonians 4, it, it describes a person that just, you know, it takes care of their family, takes care of their own, their own, their own, you know, bills and this and that, and they're on top of stuff, and they don't make, all, they don't put their responsibilities on somebody else to, you know, like, my bills are not somebody else's problem, so, like, work, you know, and, um, and so then, that's what 1 Thessalonians is for, so you interlock this, and God is telling us the recipe of how he wants us to live. So, any time that I feel um, unsure about my salvation, any time that I feel rocky, that I want a word from God, that I want to know how I'm doing, etc., usually it's interlocked with something that I'm doing that is discouraging my faith, something that I'm doing that I'm dragging dead weight, something that I'm doing that I should ought not be doing. And it's one of those things that I feel like we all have a Goliath that we need to slay. I think everybody does. Everybody. And I think that this is something that God wants all of us to sacrifice on the altar. Right? He said, become a living sacrifice unto God. Right? A living sacrifice meaning you have to do it every day. And, you know... Um, you know, I was watching a sermon. I believe that God will put uh, videos on people's feed that kind of speak to, to the person's personal condition at that personal time, right? And, and, and just ministers to them as to what God is trying to say at that time to that person. And I was listening to a, a sermon by T.D. Jakes earlier, and he was just talking about getting snatched from the fire, you know, um, and basically uh, talked about a story of Jacob being uh, defiled by his sin and garments and Satan was accusing Jacob before God and the Lord was rebuking Satan and and um, saying that Jacob was uh, like a stick in the fire pulled from the fire and he was burning um, it was a verse that T.D. Jakes used and then you know then what happened to Jacob is that they, God took off his filthy robes and he put uh, clean robes or uh, white robes and in the book of Revelations, it talks about uh, people washing their robes in the blood of Jesus Christ. You know, uh, people that come and wash their robes, they will be they will be brought into heaven because they're bank. You know, they they wash themselves in the blood of Jesus Christ. It's a, it's a form of cleansing. It's a form of repentance. It's a form of, you know, so so in all in all, um, we're not under the law. We're under grace. But what God wants to tell everybody, including me, is that he's telling everybody. He said, you know, I don't have any favorites here. It doesn't matter, like, if you have a streak of doing good things and this and that. Like, I want everybody to understand that if you fall out of line with God and doing life his way, and you start to accommodate things that God says don't do and you start to bring them in and usher them into your life then at that point it's it's like judgment is brewing for that person punishment is brewing for that person and it's like yes repentance is on the line and all of this stuff but it's all we have to take it serious I don't know I think it's 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 that speaks on you know, the sexual and moral, that God will judge them and punish them because they, they've they been called to live a sanctified life and set apart and, be, and, and live holy. And, you, you know, they might be doing a lot of things correct in the, in the, in, in the faith, 
and ministry and all of this. And they might just be struggling with the lust of the eyes or sexual morality or this or that. And they will be punished for that. And the Bible says, you know, those that reject this, they don't reject a human. They reject God. They gave him, them the Holy Spirit. That's how the Bible puts it. And it's one of those things that at that particular point in time, if you struggle with this, it makes you reflect. It makes you take a step back and say, you know what? You know, I'm playing too much. You know, I'm like, I'm messing up. I need to get right. I need to give up this. I need to slay this Goliath. I need to. And for everybody, it's something different. But it's one of those things that we need to. We need to slay those things that want to slay us. Those things that are trying to take us down. Because Satan uses that as a tactic to accuse us before God as to why we shouldn't go to heaven. Or as to why, you know, you know, he, he should be given legal ground to attack us. Because look at what they're doing, etc. And this is what the Bible says that Satan goes before God and accuses us day and night. But Jesus is our advocate. So we understand that Jesus Christ paid for our sins. But then it says, go and sin no more. It says, you know, and so it's like we understand this, but we accommodate it and we, we justify it. And we make, like T.D. Jakes was saying in the video, he was saying like, we have all of this um, therapy type of words to accommodate sin. Like, like uh, you know, it's stuff to keep us going in the sin, but it makes us feel better about it. And we use utilize it as a as a weapon or as a tool to just continue in the in the way that we know that we shouldn't. And it's like crucify the flesh is what God says. It's like die, you know, and just close that door, like like turn your back on it, like don't, you know. And so I know that I'm guilty of this, where I've utilized like I used to go to a program called Celebrate Recovery. Celebrate Recovery is like the um, 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous or or um, drug rehabilitation, like uh, Narcotics Anonymous. But it's Bible-based. It's, it's where Jesus is in the center. And I used to utilize, when I used to struggle with different things, I used to make myself feel better um, certain type of ways using terminology that will accommodate me on a bed. So when it was, when it was my turn to speak, I would just... now understand that i believe that god sees the heart he understands you know firsthand what's manipulation and what's sincere what's genuine and what's not he, he knows what's in you to do and what you can't do like according to your strength according to your willpower and so he he sees how much we're doing or not doing he sees how long it's been going on he he knows the ins and the outs he knows everything so then i think that all of that will be weighed out it will be weighed in the scales. But me personally, I'm going to throw myself under the bus because I believe in being transparent. And I also believe in helping people. So it's very easy to come on here in the video and tell people, hey, stop, stop struggling, stop sinning, and this and that. But you know what? If I don't stop lusting with my eyes, I'll be in danger of hell, fire, me personally. And you see me on these videos, and I... I, I preach and I teach and I just want to be real with people like I struggle with that and for me You know the drugs the alcohol all of that has left me and you thank God and I don't have violent tendencies that has left me. I don't steal. I don't rob that has left me I give God praise for all of that. But one thing that Carried over from my old life to my new life has been the lust of the eyes and I have gone through season and season up and down, up and down of letting it go and picking it back up and letting it go and picking it back up. And it's been a battle. It's been a battle with the lust of the eyes. I'm not even going to lie. And so it's like any time that I feel like I'm not strong with God, like I feel like like I'm checking in with God to see if I'm everything's OK between me and him and our relationship. It has always been because I knew in my conscience that I felt I was defiled by the action of lusting with my eyes. I I don't commit adultery like in physical form. 
But the Bible says that if you look upon a woman and lust after her, you committed adultery with her in your heart. And so in God's eyes, I committed adultery with women in my heart because I look at them and I, I look at them because they're, they're, they're beautiful. And so then, and I'm not just admir ad, I'm not downplaying this. I'm not just looking at their looks because they're beautiful. I'm just, I'm like, wow, you, you get me? Like, I'm not downplaying it. Like, it's the lust of the eyes. It's, it's exactly that. So if I know that I'm guilty of it, and I understand what God says in the Bible, and he says that these things will be punished, and unless you repent, unless you get right, then I just want you to know that although you see me, you know, ministering and doing all these beautiful things, that it, it the same rule applies to the people that you think, oh, they, they're made it, they're, they're all the way up there, I'm the one down here. Like, I remember me feeling that way once upon a time when I would hear people uh, pastoring on television. I'm like, oh, these people, they're just so godly, so holy. Look at how broken and down I am and look at them and look at me and I can't get it right and all of that stuff. It's a process. It's a process. You know, you weed out little by little. You give stuff up and then you start to become who God destined you to be. And God gives you the grace and he, he helps you through it. So... I don't want to pay any false illusions for people to think that the person that you follow doesn't have their own battles behind the scenes. This goes for me, but this goes for everybody else that you follow as well. It's a lie. It's a lie that anybody and everybody is just like always walking the fine line of, uh, and I can't speak for them. I can't speak for them. Um, but I've just been walking this walk long enough. And I have the fear of God, and I and I love God, and I you know follow God, and I do all of that. And if if I struggle like this, then I understand that if I if I have all of that those ingredients in my heart, and I'm diligent about reading my Bible every day and worshiping and spending time in prayer, etc. And I'm checking all those boxes, and I still struggle on the side with this side thing of the lust of the eyes. Then I understand that. Most likely other people do too. Maybe not in that department, but maybe with something else. And so, this is what I want to bring home to everybody. Um, it's one of those things that if God has brought it to your attention, and it's something that, that you know that God is saying, hey, quit that, stop that. These are the things that we need to emphasize on and address and say, okay, you know. And stop putting it off. And just, you know, whatever. Just care more. Care more about doing the right thing in that aspect. So, um, that is the video. And, you know, that it's just, it's one of those things that we can't, I just want to reiterate, I've done a lot for God. I've saved thousands of souls. I, I've, I've, I've done so many sermons and preachings and teachings and laid hands and casted out demons and healed the sick and all of that. And the Bible says that all of that will go away as if it unnoticed, as if it never happened. If I live a life that doesn't honor God, if I, if my lifestyle goes from being righteous to being unrighteous and 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 in God's eyes. You know, he says, well, you're not doing what, you know, I call him to do. And, you know, I kind of let him know already. And, and he's not, he's not turning, you know, he's not listening to me, etc. Then I, what, what starts to happen is that now it's, it's turning into punishment and judgment. Now, I think I made that point clear in terms of repentance, you know, washing everything away. But we need to understand that repentance has to do with turning away from the sin and not just saying, I'm sorry. And so, yeah, it's it's not easy. I'm not going to say it's easy, I'm, but I will say that it's a lot more mental than it is physical. So in my mind, the whole lust of the eyes thing, giving it up, is like giving up dessert, something that's really delicious. It's like, oh, man, I'm going to have to give that up. But, you know, it's one of those things that I'm just being real. 
And um, it's one of those things that that's the mental part of it. But the physical part of it is like, yeah, it's easy. It's easy not to look, you know. You make it hard on yourself because you entertain the thoughts. But anyways, God bless you. I hope this video helped you. God has called us to be a servant, disciplined, uh, live through love, right? Discipling, strong courage, gifted. Character equals oil, the oil in your lamp. Light equals power, okay? And so these are the revelations of Jesus Christ over and out. God bless you.